G'day, welcome back to my swan diary. Now you may be wondering why we've come on a field trip down to my dining room. And that's because today we are covering Psychomotor OE. And I'm going to try and trick my own body into displaying some of the twitchy horrible behaviors that I've got. Today's video is going to cover my hacks for compulsive chewing, scratching, picking and shredding, pacing, including my personal emergency stop procedure, and sleeplessness and not eating. I'm also going to chuck in a happiness tip for this particular OE and our celebrity OE call out today is going to be one of history's finest minds. Also I'm going to tell you about a place that all our little swan people can flock to. The first OE psychomotor <laughs> habit that you really need to cut out is chewing things. I know it sounds bizarre but when I was a teenager, I used to have a real problem with chewing pens. Um, and there was a few incidents where I kind of bit down on a plastic biro and I nearly swallowed a piece of plastic. <laughs> Getting splinters in my mouth, but chewing things like toothpicks, popsicle sticks. If you are chewing stuff, you need to stop that because it could land you in the emergency room. The only solution I had for that is gum. Gum everywhere so that you've always got a packet available. Because the likelihood is if you've got gum in your mouth, you're not about to pop something else in there at the same time. Um, another one that's particularly bad for your health is scratching. Um, my scratching is not too bad. So when we talked in the uh, last video about the domain framework and measuring the size of your problem, um, I said, look, if it's basically, if it's not itching, don't scratch it. And that's the way it is for me with nervous scratching. Every now and then I do get a nervous twitch while scratching the back of my head. But if it is a problem for you, you may have to go like wearing a hat or if you're scratching at your arms, wearing long sleeve shirts. And I'm a compulsive picker and shredder of things. And it's horrible because if I'm stuck in a place like a bar where I can't get up and do anything with my hands, if I'm at home, I'm okay. I'll maybe get up and stack the dishwasher or wipe down the kitchen benches or do something with my hands, fold the laundry, whatever. If I'm at a bar or pub, particularly now with COVID, where you have to sit at your table and you can't really get up, you're not allowed to walk around anymore, um, it's quite problematic problematic for me uh, because if I don't have something to play with in my hands I will literally start picking at splinters on the table and things like that and those sorts of things are destructive to other people's property and if a bounce comes along and finds you damaging the table you're going to get kicked out um, so I try to keep extra bar coasters in my hands and I just shred those. I peel the beer labels off bottles. The other thing I started to do is playing with objects that don't um, require me actually picking or shredding. So I turn my glass. If you do need to get something to hold in, in your hand and play with, um, I suggest you play to your OEs and maybe pick a fabric or maybe a little soft toy or something that you really enjoy holding so that you'll go to that as a first preference. Um, and look, my last piece of advice, and this has been a difficult one for me, is if you can't be trusted with it, don't have it. And that was kind of hard for me to deal with uh, because one thing that I can't have anymore is my wedding rings because I lost a bit of weight, they don't quite fit. With COVID, I'm continually washing my hands, taking them off, leaving them places, and I fiddle and I spin them and I risk losing them all. The other thing that I can't be trusted with is nail polish, which is why I never wear it. I'll chip the whole lot off and I'll just sit there and I'll incessantly peel with it until I pick down into the nails and it's really unhealthy. If you can't be trusted with clicky pens, like I can't, don't buy them. The other thing that I obviously have a problem with is pacing. Um, and this happens a lot, particularly if I've got writing ideas or art ideas that I'm throwing through my head, I'll just start pacing up and down to music. First, use your domain and measure it and see if you actually do have a problem. So I looked at my phone app the other day and I found that one day when I was on and leave here at home, I was thinking through a lot of stuff. I didn't leave the house, but I did five kilometers here in this very room. The reason why I am here, and we were talking about no-go zones before, is there's a wall that direct, uh, bl directly blocks this area from the main living room, um, and so you can't see me going back and forth. The other thing is I've picked a place where there's hard floors, so we've got tiles here. I'm not gonna wear a hole in the carpet. I won't do it upstairs either, because then all you'll hear is footsteps going up and down. And that's why I have these weird little shoes on. They're actually little slip-on sketches. And if I have to do this on hard floors, um, then I need something that's a little bit more supportive and quiet as well. I can't wear heavy shoes and just be going clunk, clunk, clunk all day. And if you can't get out, 
um, and go for a walk or do anything like that. Uh, my suggestion is maybe you can put the energy into something else. So if I had a mop in my hand, I could be going up and down and sweeping the floor at the same time. Uh, even tidying around the house is a great way to walk around and pick stuff up and it gets you moving and it gets you out of your seat. Um, but if you do have to be back and forth, try and find a space that's away from other people. If you can't, like, you know, get out or get a treadmill or something, or maybe in your garage or somewhere is a good place where you can get away from everybody and you're not bothering them. But now here's my secret for those times when you absolutely have to stop pacing. And the one time that this happens to me is if I'm having a difficult conversation and my mind might be running at a million miles a minute. So my natural instinct while we're talking about things and trying to think through our problems is for me to just start pacing back and forth, back and forth. What are we going to do about this? How are we going to get around this problem? I don't know. Do you know? Yeah, I'm not sure. And as you can imagine, after a while, it gets very annoying and I get to the point where I hear, well, you just stop pacing for a second and look at me. Here's my trick. Stand with my feet more than shoulder width apart. If you stand your feet together, you'll start doing this two-step thing and that swaying is just as annoying as the pacing back and forth. So stand with your feet more than shoulder width apart. So even if you do move, it's going to be sort of contained and not as annoying. And I'll take my hands because they're the things that are going to start going when my legs stop and I put them behind my back. And the good thing about having my hands behind my back is no one can, no one can see you squeezing, gripping, playing with your fingers, wringing your hands. So my last two things um, actually do have health impacts, quite real ones, um, and they are sleeplessness and not eating. Um, and sometimes the two of those go in hand in hand, um, and I find that they can be both either from stress, but it can also happen from positive stuff. So if you get some sort of big creative inspiration, um, or you're busy, you know, in a middle of a big project or a big work piece has sort of caught you, you can find yourself getting sucked into that bubble and as a result, uh, you won't sleep very much um, and maybe you don't eat. So the minute I go on and you leave, particularly in the COVID uh, era where you're not getting out a lot and you're working from home so you're not being stimulated like you normally would, um, my sleeping levels dropped off. And then once I got onto a creative project while I was on leave, I was only getting about three hours sleep at night. As you can imagine, you're not lying down. Uh, the older you get, the more you need to decompress your spine and actually get some horizontal time. Your muscles can get very sore. And if you're not eating again, your brain's running on empty, your body's running on empty, you're not getting nutrients, um, and you, you have to compensate for that. So I try to do things like making sure I do get uh, lay down time, even if I'm not sleeping, if I'm reading, I make sure I at least get off my feet. I try to have hot baths um, with Epsom salts to try and relax my muscles. Um, and when I go into patterns of not eating, I make sure I supplement all the time. Um, my happiness tip for this particular OE is to make the most of it and use it for love. Why not do something romantic with all that extra energy that you've got? And I'm not just talking about running off and having sex. Cook dinner for your partner or you do something nice to them, give them a massage or something. If it's not for you know, your partner, do it for your family or for one of your friends. Create some art or do something that you can give that to the, someone as a present. It's not just about containing that extra energy, it's about focusing it like a laser. So now it's time for the celebrity OE, Leonardo da Vinci. But good old Leo, the reason why I called him out is he was notorious for not sleeping. He slept famously for only two hours every day and he did it in 20 minute stints. Now, I've got a sneaking suspicion that he did that to avoid REM. And when you talk about imaginative uh, OEs, you know that you get some lucid dreamings. Apparently one of Leo's first art commissions was to draw, uh, was to paint something on a shield for a patron. Um, and he chose a sort of big monstrous beast that was inspired by Medusa. Apparently it was so terrifying that the client didn't take it and it had to be sold to someone else. So I can only imagine what Leo's dreams would have been like. If you look at the rich detail in his paintings, he's clearly uh, able to absorb all these wonderful things about the world around him, the colours and the textures and that sort of thing. And he translated it very well into his paintings. So I can only imagine that his dreams were quite terrifying. And I think that is why he only slept in 20 minute stints. 
And all sorts of idiots have tried to replicate that sleep pattern, thinking it was the source of his genius. His sleep wasn't the source of his genius. His genius was the source of his sleeplessness. Not only was he um, a very clean, notoriously fussy eater, um, he was also apparently a hell of a lover. Um, and if you look into his past, he got arrested when he was younger from having a bit of a uh, group interaction in the middle of a street. Lucky his connections got him off the hook with those charges. We can't deny that he was hugely intellectual and had a great imagination inventing things that couldn't even be prototyped in his time. Um, and apparently too, he had emotional OE because his journal was full of affirmations which is really weird for one of the most celebrated people of the time and throughout history, and who was quite prolific and did a number of jobs, but apparently had a lot of self-doubt and had to keep writing things in his journal to remind himself that he was okay. So for all those reasons, Leonardo da Vinci, I reckon you are probably the most star-shaped peg that's ever been on the face of the earth. But remember, I am no expert. I am just one person with always trying to share some ideas in order to spread some happiness. See you later. If you're a swan like me and you don't know any other swans, then you're probably looking for a place where we could get together, spread the word about the existence of swans and give each other a little bit of support and advice. Go on ahead and set up a group on Facebook and a page as well. So I encourage you, if you are a swan, to check it out and to join up so that we can contact each other and begin a star-shaped network. I've also set up a Twitter so that you can get on there and share these videos and follow along.